All right, so we know our subject matter for our digital painting. We've done at least kind of three thumbnails to figure out how we want to um, compose it and position it. And the next phase is how to build this into a painting. So under links and with the assignment sheet, I have a handout in the slides I'm going to be sharing with you. Oh, we don't need that. Where is it? And that handout shows how a digital painting is built up differently than digital coloring, right? So digital coloring was all about getting clean line art and then coloring behind the lines until we replace the line with color if you wanted to do a color hold. But even, but the finish always has kind of a, a real or implied outline that the color is behind. A digital painting is different. It can be done entirely based on shapes like this, where things are just kind of cleaned up as you go with uh, soft edged brushes, or it can be sketched first and then built up on top of the sketch, but never is clean line art part of it, right? So this is kind of a form of sketching. Now what I'm gonna do is take my favorite sketch, the one I decided to use, right? And I'm going to copy this onto a new layer. So duplicate with Command J, and then Command T, or if you're using Photo P, you would use Control, Control J to duplicate. And I'm going to make it kind of big, right? Then I'll hide the thumbnail layer, and then I'll dim my sketch really low and then lock it. So there's my Heather, there's my doggy. In order to view it within Photoshop, if we're lucky enough to have Photoshop, instead of having to view it on an outside program, what I can do is take that image and bring it into Photoshop. So if I open this up, just like I was trying to do in Photo P, but it wouldn't let me separate them. If I, if I float it out like this, the problem is whenever I click on the where I want to paint, it's going to disappear. So I want them in the same bar together at the top, but I want my painting on the left, my reference on the right. I want to click on my painting, and then I want to go to Window a range, and I'm going to say two up vertical, which will put them side by side. We did this a little bit with the last project and with our poster inspiration. Now I can click on this and kind of shrink it down so I can see my reference while I'm painting and eventually even steal colors from it, right? If I wanted to. So what's the first thing? Well, I'm going to continue to sketch and build up. So that's locked now. So now I'm going to just show you with a different color. Just use a regular brush. It's all about brushes. I'm going to make it a soft edge brush, so 0% hardness. I'm going to make its opacity about 50%. And 100% flow. And I want its size to be about the size of a pencil eraser. Right. So maybe like that. And I'm just using a trackpad. Now I'm actually going to kind of look at the basic shapes, if you remember those, of my dog. And that will help me situate the eyes, even though I'm doing it on this kind of caricature body. And then the ears actually kind of come up like that, basic shapes, and then triangle out. And this one's more just like a triangle. So the basic shapes. Let's 
She has these big ovals around her eyes. The wedge between her muzzle. And because I'm going for a caricature, I, I don't need it to be absolutely accurate. I don't need to trace these shapes in order to observe them. I just want to kind of have fun and make my digital painting. And then the little lips. Now I might get to the body later, right? Because obviously this body is going to be different. So that's step one. And it's similar to this step right here for this apple. Though I did it soft edged, not to look like pencil. So the next step is what's called local flat color, or just sketching in the color, sometimes scumbling. And for that, I'm going to build a brush. And I'm going to build it on top of my sketch. So right now, I'm going to change my brush to just being a hard edge brush, 100%. Same size, opacity 100. And then I'm going to create a new file in Photoshop. You can do this in Photo P2. And I'm going to make it pixels and I'm going to make it 1000 by 1000 pixels so a square it doesn't matter the resolution it's going to be 1000 by 1000 pixels I'm going to call it um, my SP20 my spring 2020 brush demo so now I have a new file open right I shrink my brush size a little bit and now I'm just going to start making A design kind of at a 45 degree angle this is how I make brushes I'm doing it with my trackpad but I want it to look pretty random and I'm not trying to touch the square it's like a spot illustration I'm making a little kind of cartoon jumble and I can vary my line weight you know some thicker lines you can see how this helps some thinner lines. Solid black. So scribbly, scribbly, scribbly. If you have a tablet, go ahead and use a tablet. Pressure sensitivity is very nice with the stylus for digital painting. Many would say it's required, but I'm going to try to show you that it's not. Okay. Now I'm going to actually switch to white paint, 100% white, and break it up a little bit, give it a little bit more texture. Now there are paint brushes built in both to PhotoBucket and to Photoshop, but I want, want you to see how those paint brushes are designed so you can make your own. I have nothing against you using established brushes. I just want you to know how you can make your own and it's not all that complicated. And you're not, there's no way I can require you to do it. It's just going to be helpful to you. So again, I'm going to vary my line weight a little bit and then kind of take some chunks every, new, every once in a while out of it. Okay, so this is now, oh, I want to make sure I avoid any hard edges you know, overlapping the sides here. Okay, so this is now my brush. So how do I save it? I go to, in, within Photoshop, I go to edit, and I say define brush preset. And then I name it. Might as well give it my name, and then hit OK. Now, <laughs> you can see that I have that brush. So let's pl play with it. I'm going to, so now I'm going to play with this brush. So I'm going to say, um, select all. I'm just going to fill it with white and now play with my new brush. Deselect. So that's my brush, right? At any size I want. Problem is, if I actually paint with this by clicking and dragging, it's just going to look like a solid bar. So now I need to modify it. 
I'll show you the difference. If I clear it all. So I go to Window, and I go to Brush Presets. And here, these are all the brushes already built in, right? My brush is going to be at the very bottom, the one I just made. It's right there. And notice how it's just a solid bar when you use it. So to change that, you have to go to the brush settings. Under Window, go to Brush. And we want to play with first shape dynamics. So first thing I want to do is play with the size jitter. That means it will change its size every once in a while, kind of randomly. Now, what I would usually do is set this to pin pressure if I'm using a tablet. But right now, I'm not using a tablet. right? But the thing that's really helpful is what's called angle jitter. Now, angle jitter will make it so you'll get that nice edge on it. It won't always go in the same direction, repeating on itself over and over again. So you always want some angle jitter. You can play with the minimum diameter, but I want it to be able to go pretty, pretty small. You can play with the roundness. That will soften its edge. So this is looking a little bit more like an actual brush, right? Now. And then you can even play with texture if you want to break it up a little bit. And so for texture, you play with scale. You play with how much contrast there is, how much depth there is, how much jitter in that there is. And I just want more and more variety. I want more brightness. There we go. See, it's giving me a little bit more power on the edge there. Good. So you kind of play with your brush. And now this is a little bit more painterly. All right, this will be fun to use, especially at lower opacities. OK. Now I need to save that, that file and basically just throw it away later. But you need to save it so that the brush is kept in your memory. And now it's it's kept with these settings. So now I'm going to make that brush my brush a little bit bigger because I'm in a higher resolution here than just 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. And I want it pretty big, and I want to use it at 100% opacity. And then I want to start stealing colors with it. So the key to digital painting is just staying on the brush tool and then just holding down the option key to switch the brush to the eyedropper to pick up colors. So I'm going to start with this gray. And that's, then I guess we put the highlight in. The highlight in here, and then the shadow in here. Now this is on a new layer, and then the gray up here. And I'm just trying to fill in kind of the flat color softly. This is a speed painting, right, of those basic shapes. And you see I'm just stealing the colors back and forth. And any whites you paint, you want to put in. Right? The problem is, if you're on a white background like I am, it's hard to see that when you're painting white. So I'm going to replace this white background with a gray background pretty soon here. So I get a little bit more of this. The nose is really dark. You can cut in around it. The lips, I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush head. So I'm not using a pressure sensitive tablet. Right, and get those lips in there. And then I can paint around it. Same thing with the eyes.
I want a little bit of highlight in there. 